So I'm working on the 99 uh, Nissan Maxima blend actuators here. I've got two of them and they both they have different problems. This actuator I got from the junkyard and it has a uh, working uh, driver assembly here. It actually generates the correct signals for the motor but the motor has a dead spot in it and sometimes when it stops it won't react to uh, positive voltages only negative and uh, this this actuator here is the one that was in the car originally and this one had a bad uh, decoder but the motor was fine and so I had wired it up um, to manually control the motor and I have no trouble controlling the motor with this but um, so what I'm going to do is combine these two and see if I can get a one working unit I'm going to take the um, the driver chip out of here and put it into here and before I took it apart, I, I marked the orientation of this control arm because you can uh, get it in a different position. And so I'm going to be uh, careful to try and get it back in that same orientation. You can see this one's in the same orientation uh, where the motor is over here and the um, arm is pointing that way. You can see uh, when I take this gear out here, it allows the... Uh, this arm to free wheel and you can see uh, when you remove this arm you can see there's a it's a potentiometer feedback potentiometer uh, circuit here and it's also uh, a resistive element right into the PC board so you can you can get an idea of what the range of uh, rotation is uh, based on the uh, layout of the uh, tr conductive traces here so it's going to be rotating say from from uh, I've marked the area here say from here to there that's that's about what a, what the uh, range of the rotation I think will be so now I'm going to do uh, go ahead and just remove this I'm going to go ahead and just cut these wires away this was just a temporary uh, test to see if if this actually solved the problem and it did um, but I don't want to have the uh, the uh, system be manually controlled I want to make it automated so now I'm going to lift up the the arm here it's just pressed on and I've got an orientation mark there and this is just uh, pressed in And uh, so I see I've got a mark here that uh, shows its rotation. And this one I had had uh, previously opened up and glued. So now I'm going to just have to cut this glue back. It just, I guess it's a silicone maybe. It doesn't really uh, have to be glued very strongly because the two pieces sandwich together when you mount it so that's the cover and so you can see here where I've uh, attached the wires and I've also uh, intercepted the power here and clipped a pin so what I'm going to be using is this board I'm going to put this board over here and I just want to get the orientation here correct when I remove the gears and so when I put it back so I have I see this uh, hole in the gear it's sort of in line with this mark on the motor and so I can just go ahead and start removing these gears here
And I'm going to lift that up. And sure enough, it's pretty much right in the middle of its rotation. So the motor is good here, and the motor in this unit is also glued into place. So I'm going to be removing the uh, the board. Which uh, is not screwed into place, it's just held by two little uh, pins there. So the board's held in. There's two holes here on the board and it's just literally just held into place down here on these pins. And so since I soldered this before onto the right onto the motor, I'm just going to go ahead and unsolder it. And I'm going to be resoldering uh, I guess the these other wires to it. So that's the bad assembly. And over here's the good one. This one's got the good board. And I'm going to disconnect it. And uh, before I do, I'm going to note that the negative, the black wires to the outside and the red wires to the inside. And these are just push on connections. And I'm trying to lift this without damaging the board, of course. It's kind of a tight fit down in the holes there. So this is the good one. I'm going to transfer it over here. And it snaps back into place there. Now I just have to hook these wires up. And I might end up having to solder them because I've already got solder on these terminals. And so it seems like the best thing for me to do is to solder these wires on. And really just kind of want to just find out if this is really all that's wrong with the system. So this is the easiest way to, for me to find out. And um, if I need to, I can buy another one of these uh, assemblies. But I'm just, uh, I don't want to buy one if I don't need it. I've got the wire stripped back. I'm just going to put a little solder on there to get it started. Tinning wires. So I'm heating up the terminal and uh, sliding the wire right into the hole which it looks like it's designed for that but or a slide terminal here we go got the connections made
And now I'm just going to reassemble I think I'm going to use this gear. Well, I better use I better use this because I marked it. That one was in there oriented that way, and then there's just you can kind of just tell by the the, uh, the cog, the gears, uh, what fits where. So I've got all the gearing back and so when I attach that it's going to be back in that location there and now all I have to do is uh, put this back together I think I'm going to use uh, the cover from this one because the uh, tabs are still intact and it hopefully will click and latch and so there I don't really need any adhesive and I can add this piece back into it and what I want to do is uh, push it from this side I don't want to damage the uh, the resistive elements so I'm going to hold the gear comes through the back here so I'm going to hold the gear and and not press against the case, but press against the gear itself. There we go. So it snapped back into place, and it has the uh, the marks line up. So this is ready to go back in and uh, and test. I'm also interested to see what's going on with this motor. So I might pr pry this up a little and see if I can get that out. And, do some investigating on it. Looks like it's held in with uh, double sided tape. And there was some uh, silicone or grease in there, and I guess it just sort of dissolved the adhesive. But this is the motor. It's. Uh, it's staked in, so it's. If I open that up, it's probably going to damage it. But I'm going to go ahead and try, I guess. And so the first thing I want to do is get this gear off because it won't come off without that. So I'm going to see if I can pry this gear out of there. And so I've got the, the drive gear out. And I'm going to try to remove these uh, crimps here and see if I can get the back cover off. I might have to... Uh, Use a Dremel on that. Evidently they had that in some sort of jig and they uh, crushed the back into it. But I'm curious to see what happened inside this motor. I'll save that for another video when I can uh, get the proper tools here. What I'm going to do is use a Dremel and grind those staking, the staked uh, pieces of metal away then this back cover can come out and the whole motor can come apart but for now that's uh, that's all I'm going to do on this one I'm going to go ahead and install this into the car and, uh, and test it, it should be good so now I have a bad motor and a uh, bad driver <laughs> Thanks for watching and hope you enjoyed the video and hope you found it useful.